Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I am taking you through a introduction to compound interest. In this video, you'll find out what it is. We're going to do a comparison to simple interest and take you through some worked examples. So let's get right into it and talk about what compound interest is. Well, it's defined as a type of interest that you would earn and it's earned on most investments and loans like mortgages, um, like personal loans and most things like bank and interest in the bank that sort of thing so lots of loans and investments apply compound interest in fact it's very common in real life now the word compound means it's made up of several parts and if we can remember what the definition is and some of the synonyms for compound it helps us to understand what compound interest really is all about the word some synonyms for the word compound include to worsen increase magnify or add to so if it was the case of a loan Yes, having compound interest is definitely worse than simple interest because we're learning earning interest on the interest and um, it increases the value of the loan much faster than would simple interest. Um, it magnifies your loan, makes it bigger. Um, in terms of investments though, that's actually a positive thing. It makes our investment much bigger because it's being added to. So what we're talking about here is that interest that is earned on our loan or our investment is being added to and then when we add the interest to the account, more interest is then being earned on the interest. So it's interest on interest on interest over time. So our money builds and grows much faster. So it's not just a simple case of like with simple interest where we have interest, we have a principal, we add it on and that's the end. No, we add this um, principal, we add the interest on, we calculate more interest, add that on, add that on, add that on until the loan or the, the investment is finished. So what we see with compounded investments and loans is it grows exponentially, which means it isn't straight line growth like simple interest. It grows and increases and speeds up as time goes by. In fact, Warren Buffett, one of the world's most famous investors, talked about the magic of compound interest because he attributes his success as an investor to um, interest making his money grow very fast. So let's compare the two. So if we look at simple interest, we see this really in very few um, lifetime situations. Something called a term deposit, which is a type of investment where you can put your money in the bank, you agree with the bank on a fixed interest rate, and your money sits in that bank account for an agreed period of time, maybe three years, and at the end, you take your money out of the bank, and they give you the interest that was agreed to at the beginning of the investment. So that's a term deposit. Um, simple interest is applied there. Um, with government bonds, so without going too technical on you today because it's a mass channel, not a finance channel, but a government bond is another form of investment where you are lending money to the government so they can build infrastructure like roads, hospitals, schools, etc. So when you are buying a government bond, you are agreeing to an interest rate up front. At the end of the government bond, when it expires, they pay you back your money and they give you the interest that was agreed to. And there are some other types of loans, for example, some car loans, um, some store loans as well are often use simple interest. On the other hand, mortgages are a type of compound interest. Most savings accounts, like your transaction account that you put your money in, where your pay goes into and you take your money out, it would be using compound interest as well. When simple interest um, is added to the loan or the investment, is sometimes it's added at the very beginning. So it's calculated if you've got an agreed period of time, it might be calculated, okay, this is the interest. Um, it's going to be $200 and they might add that at the beginning and then it just sits there in that investment till the end um, and then boom, it gets handed back to you. Or if it was the case of a loan, they might calculate that interest at the beginning of the loan, add it onto the loan and then you have to just pay it off in repayments, including that interest. So that's where interest, simple interest can sometimes be added. Other times it can be added at the very end. So if you've got a, like a term deposit and you put it in there for three years, when you go to take your money out, then they add the interest on if you've kept it in the account for the full three years. With compound interest though, it's being added throughout the loan and investment. In fact, because the interest is adding to the interest. So we can see here with simple interest, it grows in a straight line, always in a straight line. Um, with compound interest though, it grows and it grows and it grows and then it starts to speed right up. The more money you get, the more interest you get and it starts to go through the roof. So it grows much faster than simple interest does. Okay, let's do some worked examples. We're gonna compare simple interest to compound interest in this example. 
So Tammy borrowed $1,000 at 10% PA. PA means per annum or per year. And it's compounded. So that's the very first question you should ask yourself as soon as you see a loans or an investment question is, is this simple or is it compound interest? If it's simple interest, you simply pull up your formula from your formula sheet, which is I equals PIN, I equals PIN. But if it's compound interest, you need to do something different. So we need to calculate how much she's going to owe after three years. Okay, well, firstly, we're going to set this up in a table to show you how compound interest works. So in the first year, she's borrowed $1,000. So what we need to do is calculate the interest, which is 10%. So 10% of $1,000 is $100. And then we're going to add it to the starting amount. And we're going to end up with an amount owing at the end of the first year, which is $1,100. Now that comes forward to the second year because that's the amount at the end of the first year is the same as the amount at the beginning of the second year. It just carries through. So now at the beginning of the second year, she owes $1,100. Let's calculate another year's interest. 10% of that is $110. And we add the two together, 1,210. Now that amount at the end of the second year becomes the amount at the beginning of the third year, it carries down. And let's apply 10% again, $121, and we add that on. So the amount owing after three years is $1,331. And we can see just by doing a simple subtraction that um, $1,331 take away 1,000 is the interest that Tammy has earned of, or actually that she's not earned, she's paid that because she's borrowed the money. So that's $331. Okay, how does that compare to simple interest? Well, remember, simple interest is I equals PIN. So if we substitute that information in, 1,000 times 0.1, which is 10% as a decimal, times three for three years, gives us $300 in simple interest. So you can see that with the compound interest, Tammy is more advantaged because she's earned an extra $31. Uh, because, as you can see, the amount that is being applied to the 10% changes every year because it's grown by the value of the interest. So Tammy's actually would have been better off with a simple interest loan of um, three with the $300 interest then paying all that extra interest back to the bank. Okay, so that's a comparison of how compound interest works versus simple interest. Now you might be thinking, well, that's well and good for three years, but do I really wanna set up a table for a longer period of time? Well, no, you don't. You don't want to have to apply the, the um, interest, add it on, apply, add it on, apply, add it on. If we go back here, what we've actually effectively done is times this by 10%, times it by 10%, times it by 10%. So we've times it by 10% three times for three years. So there is a better way. There's a formula that we can use, and this is the formula. Now, when we time something by something three times, so point times by 0.1, times by 0.1, times by 0.1. We've actually times it by 0.1 to the power of three. And that's what we're actually doing with this formula. We're taking the principal, timesing it by the interest rate to the power of the number of years. Okay, so here's the variables in the formula explained. A is your amount at the end of the loan or the investment. So if you've invested some money, it's the amount that you have in the bank, which is your principal and your interest included. Or if it's a loan, it's the amount that you owe the person who's lent you the money at the end of the period of the loan, including all the interest that you've accrued during that time. P is the principal, same as with the PIN formula. Principal, the amount at the beginning, the amount that got invested or the amount that got borrowed. I is your interest rate per compounding period as a decimal. Now, all of the examples in this video are going to be per annum or per year. So the per compounding period is going to be in years. But in our next video, we're going to do some different compounding periods. So it's always important to remember that this is per compounding period and it's as a decimal. So you need to actually change it from a percentage to a decimal by dividing by 100. Now, you'll notice it's the same variable as the simple interest formula. And that tricks a lot of people up because it's actually got a slightly different definition here. With the simple interest formula, it was the interest rate per year, whereas here it's the interest rate per compounding period. So just keep that in your mind for the next video. Okay, N is the number of compounding period, not the number of years. Once again, we're using the same variable as the simple interest formula. With the simple interest formula, N is the number of years, but here it's the number of compounding periods. So we just need to remember that as well.
Okay, worked example two. Zach invested $12,500 at 2% per annum compounded. Always look for that word compounded in the question because that tells you whether it's simple interest or compound interest. That's the very first question you should always ask yourself. Calculate the value of his investment at the end of eight years. So our first step is always to write the formula and we can pull that off our formula sheet. Number two, state your variables. Always important to do this. A lot of people jump straight into substituting, straight into the equation, but there's some work we need to do to um, I, to work I out first. So it's always good to state what those variables are. A is our unknown. That's what we're trying to find, the amount of the investment at the end. P is the principal, 12,500. I is 0 0.02, so we've taken the 2% and we've divided it by 100 to get an amount as a decimal. And the amount of time is eight years because it's only compounded per annum. It doesn't tell us that there's any other compounding periods. Substitute into the formula now. And we've substituted that in. And then you can simply put that on your calculator. You can use the brackets, that's a great idea, um, but most calculators will know what they're doing. Um, but I think it's always a good idea to use the brackets. Or you can actually simplify what's in this brackets first. 1 plus 0 0.02 is 1.02. So take this part here and you could use BOMDAS brackets first. So we've filled out what's in the brackets. And then O means ordinals, which we call indices in Australia. So take 1.02 on your calculator, raise it to the power of 8, and then times your answer by 12,500. So we've, once we've done that, we get this answer here. Now you'll notice I've written all of the decimal places down. But the reason I've done that is because we always write a statement at the end. And our statement would have the rounded to two decimal places because it's money and the dollar sign. So here shows that I've used a calculator to work the answer out. But we always need to write a sentence at the end. Okay, because here we've got a worded problem. And the question doesn't say to us, find A. It says, calculate the value of his investment. That's why it's important to present that with a dollar sign, two decimal places, and a statement. Let's look at worked example three. Lachlan borrowed $480,000 at 4.5% per annum for 30 years compounded. Calculate the amount of interest paid to the bank over 30 years. Now, the important thing to note here is that we've already got this um, interest rate and it's been given as a percentage but it's got a decimal in it. Now, a lot of students see the decimal here and think that they don't need to convert it to a decimal. Well, yes, it's a percentage with a decimal place in it, but this percentage here tells us it's still not a decimal. So we need to divide that by 400. So as before, we write the formula, then we state our variables again. So you can see I've divided 4.5 by 100, and my principal is $480,000 and n is 30. I definitely wouldn't want to work this out one year after another for 30 different things in a table. That would be crazy. The formula really saves time. So let's substitute that into the formula now. So you can see here, I've written the substitution down. I don't jump straight to the calculator. I write it down first. Once again, you could use BOMDAS brackets. So add these two together and then raise that to the power of 30 on your calculator, then multiply it by 480,000. Alternatively, Type it into your calculator with the brackets and your calculator will know what to do. So once we do that, we get an answer, which is a really big answer. Now, you might be thinking, well, I just write that as a statement and I'm done. Wrong. The question says calculate the amount of interest, not calculate the amount owing at the end. So we found the amount owing at the end. The question is, though, how do we find the interest? Well, you need to remember the amount owing at the end is the amount we borrowed plus all the interest that was earned. So we've got to calculate the interest. The formula for that is not on your formula sheet, but it's one you need to memorize. The amount at the end is always equal to the principal, the amount you started with, plus all of the interest that we added. There's the interest rate here, and we added it for 30 years. So once we work that out, we know that the amount at the end is this big long number here is equal to the principal plus the interest. So if we subtract 480,000 from the amount at the end, we're gonna get the interest is equal to this number, but let's write it as a statement with a dollar sign and two decimal places. And when we put some column, commas in, it makes it a lot easier to, to write and understand what the number is. It's actually the amount of interest paid was $1,317,752.71. dollars A lot of interest was paid. You might be thinking to yourself, is that even logical? 
Because you should always have that little logic check at the end of your questions. Is that logical? Well, yes, he borrowed a lot of money, almost half a million dollars, and it took him 30 years to pay it back. So we saw with that curved graph that went up exponentially that over a long period of time, a smaller amount of money can become a very large amount of money through the power of compounding. Okay, so he's actually ended up paying almost um, three times what he borrowed in just interest alone. It's crazy. That's why you should always, 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 when you're borrowing money, make sure that you negotiate a good interest rate if it's possible to and pay it back as fast as you can because over 30 years, you end up paying back way more than you borrowed. Let's talk quickly now about compound interest in real life. Now, something to be aware of is that interest rates change and vary daily. You often hear them called a variable rate, meaning that they're gonna change. This is something that you can observe in real life. Now, you see, see here I've got in green an observation. That's a little hint for you, something useful for your PSMT in the future. Okay, interest rates vary every day. An exception is where you've got a loan where the interest rate has been fixed. So this is typical for things like home loans. You'll have a variable rate that will change on a regular basis, but you've also got a rate you can lock it in or fix that rate for an agreed period of time, maybe for three years. And typically people do this if they're expecting that the interest rates are gonna go up, then they wanna fix that loan rate at a lower rate and prevent themselves from having to pay the higher interest. The implication of this is, is that when we use the compound interest formula on a loan or an investment, we're only gonna really get an, an estimate of an amount at the end. So because interest rates change all the time, if we're told the investment's 2% per annum compounded weekly for five years, well, the likelihood of it staying at 2% per annum for five years is very low. In fact, it's probably gonna change. We can get an estimate of where it's gonna be based on today's rates, but the reality is, is that whatever's going on in the economy out there could mean that your loan ends up greater or lower than what your estimate is. So that's a bit of a limitation on our estimates when we're using compound interest formula. Um, this also means we're making the assumption when we use that formula that the rates aren't going to change. Otherwise, it's impossible to know what the future value is going to be. So whenever we use the compound interest formula for a long period of time, we're assuming that it's not gonna change because otherwise how on earth would you get um, an estimate in the first place? Um, so we make a lot of assumptions in real life when we use these formulas that nothing's going to change. Reality is things do change and that limits our ability to use that. So I hope that's a bit of a hint of how you can think about compound interest for a problem solving and modeling task. Well, if you found this video helpful, here are some ways that you can do something about that helpfulness. You can tell somebody, why not tell your teacher to watch McClatchy Maths, um, show a friend, or even tell us in the comments. We always love to hear your wonderful feedback. And you could like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you'll always know when new videos are on the way. And if you've got questions about anything you saw in today's video, you can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. And you could also message us on Facebook Messenger or Instagram messaging. Also follow us there on social media. It's a great way to stay in touch and connect with you. Well, I'm Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Mass. Do stay tuned for part two, where we're going to look at multiple compound periods within a year. Thanks for watching.